So here we are in the deep forest, <laughs> gathering around the camp here. Around the campfire is an, an evening ritual when we're camping. And in this place with the fire crackling and popping, with the smell of roasting franks making us hungry, at least in our minds, we feel homey here, even cozy. There's something about camping that brings groups together. In many ways, you are my group. You are my tribe. This North Madison Congregational Church is a little tribe on the southwest corner of the circle where Route 79 and 80 come together in Madison. But it's a bit startling when you get really used to it to think that this tribe is a bit unusual. I think we found out this morning how, how unusual we are in a number of ways. But in some ways, there's another way we're unusual, and that's that we're part of a larger group that is almost an anti-tribe. Our United Church of Christ is kind of the anti-denomination, kind of the anti groupy church. We're not hierarchical. We're not, uh, we're not all about telling you what the rules are. We're, we're kind of anti all of that. Other factions of the Christian movement have sometimes labeled us as not believing anything in particular. What do you think of that? <laughs> I mean, just last week, we recited together a statement of faith that uh, really does lay out some beliefs. There's a set of things that I think we have in common. We believe in a triune God, a creator, a redeemer, a comforter and sustainer, the Trinity. We believe that each person sitting here, each person who may be out in the parking lot or driving a little too fast along Route 79, uh, is unique and valuable and loved in God's eyes. We believe that each person is on a spiritual journey, that we're in the process of becoming. We believe that that journey produces an authentic relationship with God. We believe that all baptized people belong body and soul to our Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ. When we baptize, we promise our love, support, and care to the one being baptized. And we promise we'll never go back on that, no matter what. We believe that all people of faith are invited to take part in communion at the table that Jesus sets for us, that it's not up to us to decide who's worthy and who isn't, that Jesus invited all. Some of those beliefs perplex our sisters and brothers who name themselves as belonging to other... I better turn that. <laughs> as belonging to other tribes. Yeah, I, I, you know, Allison likes them a little charred, but I, <laughs> I just realized that's... That's starting to smoke. <laughs> Some of those beliefs may perplex our sisters and brothers in other tribes. Some may consider the whole idea of God split into three entities kind of old-fashioned, kind of retrograde. Others wonder why we don't understand the power of the church. Excuse me, I mean the power of the Bible that sets rules for us. What's this whole thing about spiritual journeys uh, where we're not perfect yet? We should expect people to arrive in the house and then be members of the church once they are perfected. And if they still have doubts or things to explore, well, they should just keep them to themselves. And in general, they ask, don't churches work better when churches gather people of similar interests of similar backgrounds, of similar languages, of similar appearance. And there's that whole issue about beliefs. Why do we only recognize two sacraments? Wouldn't a better religion have five or six or seven? Where do we get the idea that God allows 
people besides white males to be in charge of things. That God allows women to be in charge of things. That God allows people of color to be in charge of things. Lesbian, gay, bisexual, transgender, queer. How can other people talk to a church like that? And by a church like that, they mean us. Well, Jesus gave us a camp motto that they may all be one. Don't those words stand? I mean, they stand out because I made them bold in the, <laughs> in the script. But they stand out for other reasons. Jesus saw in his lifetime how we tend to break apart into little groups. He saw his followers getting off in groups of two or three, going out into the parking lot to talk about what they'd just seen, talking about things that they didn't understand, but breaking off into little groups that said, you know, we should have a revolution, or no, we should be about healing, or no, we should just be quiet and, and not attract the attention of the authorities. Jesus saw how we break up into little groups. So those six words spoken between Jesus and Jesus' Father, that they may all be one, are words of witness. They witness to Jesus being part and parcel of God's identity. They witness to the desire of God for the world to work together. They witness to the hope that the world can see how very much God loves this world through a united and uniting presence. Those six words, that they may all be one, those six words are the motto that the United Church of Christ took on when it organized in 1957. Those six words have led to cooperation and intermingling among ten Protestant denominations, opening the doors to accept ministers ordained in other traditions to work and proclaim the gospel among us, and vice versa. Those six words have set the table for cooperative work around the world with other expressions of the Christian movement. Not that we bring our practice and our belief to other places, but that we cooperate with other people of Christian belief to express themselves in the best way they can and for us to listen as we do to other settings of the church everywhere. Those six words are the basis for our understanding that all are welcomed into Christ's church. No exceptions, not just those we approve of. Those six words have become the seed for our identity as the United Church of Christ. It's an identity living out Jesus' witness of peace and unity. It's an identity that can't sit still when injustice thrives around us. It's an identity that restlessly seeks common ground with our neighbors. But taking on the United Church of Christ identity has consequences. Would you like a... Yeah, okay. I've got another one right here. It's always good to have a little fortification before you talk about consequences. <laughs> and we experience those consequences from time to time. Our claim that we're making a radical statement about God's love in the world has consequences. We're acknowledging that God's power and God's spirit are not ours to manage, that we're not in charge of it. We're opening our doors and our hearts to those whom God loves, even when that's a stretch for us. We're rejecting the idea that we get to judge who is living a life worthy of Christ's call. Our claim opposes those who want to control and ration God's love for their own purposes. Now, 
Some branches of the Christian movement, can you believe this? Some branches of the Christian movement reject us as apostates because we accept people as they are. We've been called heretics. We've been called errant. But we love them too. It's not always easy. But we love them too even when they reject us as not falling in line with their beliefs. And we stand proudly as a church that opens its doors and opens its hearts to the world. Our claim of that United Church of Christ identity means we won't be satisfied with second best. We won't be satisfied with affirming only some of God's love for the world. We won't be satisfied with proclaiming a part of the gospel. We won't be satisfied with only sharing some of Jesus' love through the communion table, only sharing some of Scripture, only sharing the washing of the baptismal waters with certain select people who have been members for 50 years and their families for 100 years before that. We won't be satisfied with that. We won't be satisfied with a world where only some may be one. We stand with Jesus. We, stand, we pray with Jesus. When Jesus prays to God, I pray to you that they may all be one. We pray that we may all be one. Now this week I'm going to a gathering of what I think of as UCC camp, our general synod. Most folks will be dressed somewhere between this and maybe slacks and shirts, a few dresses, a few bonnets, but mostly like this. I can pretty much count on a few things. I know I'm going to see and hear some words and thoughts I've never seen or heard before. I know I'm going to be challenged at some point during the next few days to try something new, something that I never would have considered on my own. And I know I'm going to be bored out of my mind by the details of parliamentary procedure because that's what happens when you get a big gathering trying to refine human words into a divine pronouncement. You have to put up with the details. Mostly, though, I'm going to be in a large space where people like you, people like me, like no one you ever imagined as being similar to you and me, all of us will be working together. And on your behalf, I will be challenged to look for what God is calling us to do to these, in these uncertain and unsettling times. Church that made space and gave its heart to them is what I'm going to be remembering this week. A church that needs to make space and give its heart to others, that's what we're going to be working toward this week. Our UCC camp's going to start at sunrise with a bugle. Well, not really a bugle with breakfast, but I, I would prefer the bugle. But it's going to start early in the morning. It's, it's going to continue late into the evening for five days in a row. So as I hike off toward Milwaukee, I ask for your prayers. I ask for your support. And in turn, I will be praying and supporting the tribe that is North Madison Congregational Church, United Church of Christ as our words and our actions here are reflected in that larger gathering, as the campfire that is General Synod burns brightly. We're going to be listening for the words that come out of that big gathering. Some of them we'll take on for ourselves. Others we'll think about and pray about, and it'll take a while. But as we live out the prayer of Jesus, that all may be one. May we continue to be listening for the deeper word behind that. Camp's calling. I'm going. Thanks be to God. <laughs>